And we continue at 155 pounds with these two tall strikers, Jenna Fabian out of New Zealand, Laura Sanchez representing the United States. Randy, we saw earlier, Taylor Gardano, a lot of amateur experience, translated well into the PFL Smart Cage. Laura Sanchez is hoping that the same thing happens for her. I like how Laura Sanchez explains how all her prowess in Division I basketball translates to MMA, and I have to agree with that. I've seen a lot of people warm up in that cage. I've seen very few throw their foot over the top bar to stretch out. <laughs> I was like, holy cow, this girl's tall. Well, Ke Kenny, that, that's one of the most intriguing things about this matchup. At six feet tall, Jenna Fabian usually has the height and reach advantage. She's actually facing someone taller than her tonight. Th that's right. And also what makes it intriguing, it's Rufus Sport against City Kickboxing, two of the best striking gyms in the world. Uh, of course, City Kickboxing in New Zealand have produced great fighters like Dan Hangman Hooker, Alexander Volkanovsky, and Israel Adesanya, a pair of champions in their respective weight classes. And when you have that kind of room, it just increases the sharpness, increases the level of the room. We take a look at the tail of the tape presented by Rich Energy. Six foot for Jenna Fabian, six one for Lara Sanchez, but Jenna still with the longer reach, at least in the arms. And those long legs Randy was just talking about, they give Lara Sanchez an advantage in the leg reach. Lillian Garcia starts us off. And now it is time for the women's lightweight division. This fight is presented to you by Rich Energy. In the blue corner, she is a freestyle fighter. Standing at 6'1", she weighs in officially 155 and one half pounds. As a professional, she is undefeated at 1-0. Fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, here is Laura Sanchez. Her opponent, fighting out of the red corner, she is a Muay Thai specialist. At six feet tall, she weighs in officially 155 and three quarter pounds. In three professional bouts, she has a record of two wins and one loss, with both victories coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Auckland, New Zealand, here is Jenna Fabian! Your referee in charge, Gasper Oliver. Gasper Oliver oversees the action in this women's lightweight bout. Laura Sanchez in the black and gray. Jenna Fabian out of New ready? Zealand in the red. Fight! Right to the center of the smart cage they go. Fabian in the southpaw stance. Laura Sanchez immediately trying to take away that lead hand and that lead foot of Jenna Fabian. Trying to keep her left foot on the outside of the right foot of Fabian. And trying to establish her long reach. Fabian in the southpaw stance. Slaps a leg kick out there as the feeling out process dominates the early part of this round. PFL Mixed Martial Arts, the only MMA organization with a true sports format. Regular season, as you're seeing here, playoffs and a championship. Points on the line here, not only for a win, but bonus points for a stoppage. Six, the maximum, if you can get the first round stoppage, as we just saw Dennis Goltzov do in heavyweight action. Fabian's got to watch out for that right hand and right high kick of Laura Sanchez as she walks down Fabian. There's the right hand on cue. Fabian able to absorb most of that with her shoulder. Another leg kick from Jenna Fabian. Already some redness showing on the lead leg of Laura Sanchez. Nice body kick there from Jenna Fabian. You heard the grunt. And those are the kind of weapons that's gonna stop your opponent from just moving forward whenever they want. Nice job there by Fabian. If you don't want to be walked down, that's a great way to put it out there. Kenny, in, in striking exchanges with the open stance like this, orthodox with the south oh. there's that hit kick. Didn't quite get up high enough for Laura Sanchez. Yeah, those go-go gadget legs of Sanchez. <laughs> they were at it there. One way to cut off the cage. 
as I was saying, open stance, the right hand or the left hand become the lead hand a lot of times. You, get, you throw that almost like a jab. No question about it. You see Sanchez keeps slapping away that lead hand of Fabian. And that will throw off your distance. You know, as a striker, you want to be able to establish that hand or at least find your range. And Sanchez doing a good job of taking that away. Fabian's able to grab the underhook and spin her opponent into the smart cage. Now Jenna Fabian goes to work on the body of Laura Sanchez. He sneaks up and through. This is definitely where that Muay Thai background will come into advantage in this clinch. The clinch work in Muay Thai is very, very particular. They use that plum, that collar tie, and they are very effective at losing, using knees. Obviously, no elbows in the PFL. More knees to the body from Fabian. Double underhooks here for Lara Sanchez. Can she use it to work her way off? Not with the head positioning of Fabian. One of the interesting things here about a, a Muay Thai clinch like this, basically, uh, from two female fighters is often the advantage in flexibility, Kenny. You see, usually the, the knees are able to sneak up a little higher from some of the women. Yeah, no question about it. And, and if you have long legs like Sanchez, those are the shots that are really gonna hurt. You can drive your leg that much higher, that much deeper into the stomach of your opponent. Cindy Dandois out of Belgium warming up, getting ready for her own fight in women's lightweight regular season action here for the Professional Fighters League. She's making her debut tonight. Temporary body lock there from Sanchez, and this time she is able to flip position, and now she's got Fabian pressed against the cage. Not for long, says Jenna Fabian. Nice body work there for Sanchez. Yeah, Sanchez starting to take control with this clinch. He's winning the underhook battle here. Now Fabian back and putting Sanchez's back up against the cage. 45 seconds remain here in round number one. Heavy pressure against the cage from Jenna Fabian. And she steps back and fires a right hand and a hook. Nice combination there from Jenna Fabian. That's a smart way when you have the round ticking away to land that flurry. That's going to look good for the judges. See the damage on that lead leg of Sanchez, that lead left leg. Nice body kick again from Jenna Fabian, starting to figure things out here even at distance. Here comes the 10 second clapper. High kick attempt from Jenna Fabian, and we will see round number two next. One of the signs of a more experienced striker is when they can put together combinations, not just ones and twos. And there's a beautiful combination there from the world Muay Thai champion. Jenna Fabian in the red, Laura Sanchez in the black and gray. Women's lightweight regular season action. Sanchez waiting in behind the right hand and grabs this clinch again. Take a look at our fighter performance rating from round one. A score of 55 for Jenna Fabian. Those points scored on that combination. Kenny just gave you a replay for. Double underhooks by Fabian. Nice control position against the fence here, trying to find ways to land her knees. And now she backs out again and throwing those combinations, punching her way out. I love that. The breaking away from the clinch, Randy, is oftentimes where these kind of fights are decided. If you're leaning on each other a lot, it's the separation. Yeah, and Sanchez really needs to be careful. That, that right arm is really going low, especially since Fabian's been attacking the body. And usually that's gonna set up a, a big left high kick for Fabian. So let's see if she can land that. She goes down to the body and then she'll probably go upstairs with that left high kick. So watch for that. Fabian uses the right hook to turn the corner there. Sanchez tests out a body kick of her own. Touch of the gloves on maybe an accidental eye poke. They're, back, they're right back to it. Nice body kick from Fabian, partially caught by Sanchez. And once again, we go to work against the cage. Fabian doing a nice job of turning right at the last second and putting Sanchez on the cage instead of getting stuck on the cage herself. Sanchez turns the tables here. Did so with overhook control, Randy. That displays some strength. Oh, excuse me, underhook for Laura Sanchez. I'm on the wrong end. <laughs> Body kick again there from Jenna Fabian. 
could be setting that trap, just like you said, Kenny. Drawing that right arm down, and the next one will come. Instead of going to the body, go right to the head. Let's take a look inside Jenna Fabian's corner. Head position five. She's gonna try and turn your five, head position, that's it. Good. Good. Break her grips, five. Head position, breaking the grips, Randy. You know anything about fighting right here? <laughs> <laughs> never been there, never in my life. You wrote the book on this. Well, and it's interesting because, look, a height advantage is usually a really good thing in a fight, but when you're working against the cage like this, it's often easier if you're the shorter fighter to get your head underneath the chin and use that as a leverage point. It can neutralize some of the advantage the, the longer fighter will have in the leverage, especially a, a longer fighter that's good at pot shotting and landing that jab or landing those long legs. Back and forth they go against the cage here, taking turns, heavy, five, heavy, heavy, grading heavy. each other against this PFL smart cage. We definitely have seen improvements in Jenna Fabian's game. The in-betweens, the transitions from the clinch to the striking, that's where she's really winning this fight here against Sanchez. Well, she talked about it in the fighter meetings, one of the advantages of being from New Zealand. They got the pandemic taken care of inside the space of a month and went back to normal. She was able to train with consistency and regularity down there at City Kickboxing. The Cronus Fight Tracker showing you that two-thirds of this fight are happening right here against the cage. Nice work by Laura Sanchez, who's starting to turn the tide a little bit, and almost on cue, Jenna Fabian pushes her right back against it. You'll see it really has been a battle for both underhooks and head position. Who's ever winning that is winning this clinch and able to turn the other fighter and land knees. Fabian shortening her levers. Look for her to try and clear this clinch position and throw combinations here. I'm expecting her to back out and try and throw some more from there. Definitely. This is where she's found a lot of success. Fabian more than doubled up on the strikes landed and thrown, as you can see in our smart cage strike tracker at the bottom. The knees keep coming up. Body lock there from Jenna Fabian. Randy, how do you break that if it's you with your back against the cage? Hey, double overhooks is tough to operate from. She's got to swim in and get one of her own underhooks. And then you can circle towards that underhook and change the position. Separated back oh. to the center they go. Nice combo there from Fabian Sanchez, able to avoid most of it. Ten seconds remain in round number two. Points on the line in round three. Nice hook from Fabian to punctuate the round. Time. Sean O'Connell, Randy Couture, Kenny Florian back beside the PFL Smart Cage here at Ocean Casino Resort in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Round three of women's lightweight action. Jenna Fabian in the red. Laura Sanchez at a Rufus Sport up there in Wisconsin in the black and gray. And back to the clinch to start round three. Head position there from Fabian as her corner is calling for. Take a look at our FPR scores from round number two. Fabian banks her second round in a row according to the FPR algorithm. Jenna is definitely having success in the clinch, but Laura kind of is as well. And while I would think that, you know, Jenna is winning some of these exchanges or most of the exchanges, I think she has the advantage from the outside. She seems to me, guys, to be the faster fighter out there. Well, that separation is really, when they break the clinch, it's Jenna who's throwing more and landing a little bit more. Even at the very end of round number two, scored with a hook. There's a left hand from Jenna Fabian. Sanchez just a little slow on the return. Jenna doing a nice job of moving her feet and finding those angles to land those little combinations. Jenna Fabian has been banking those body kicks with her roundhouse. Don't be surprised if she tries to sneak one upstairs to the head or neck of Laura Sanchez, who for her own case reaches out a left hand jab. Right hand attempt. And nice pressure there from Sanchez. 
If you have a choice to throw a kick, you prefer to either be stationary or moving forward way easier. If you're backing up, you feel like you're off balance when you're throwing those kicks. So good job by Sanchez to back her up. And there you saw Sanchez dig and get that underhook of her own and circle towards that underhook and trade places with Fabian, putting Fabian on the fence. Sanchez pressuring with the head. I hope the folks at home appreciate the grueling nature of these types of fights. It might not be the most visually exciting form of mixed martial arts, but it is one of the toughest. Well, it's certainly a place I like to live, that Greco-Roman background. You know, if I could get my hands on them and smother them there, make them work harder than they wanted to work. But I think if both of these fighters would shorten their underhooks a little bit, they'd be able to clear better and throw better combinations from that inside range. And, and what's interesting in Muay Thai, you know, they're known for the, it's the art of eight limbs, but, you know, they truly appreciate the clinch. You score more points in the clinch than you do with your hands, feet, knees, and elbows. So uh, it, it is definitely an art form. Separation here, halfway through round number three. Sanchez with a nice right hand. Yeah, you can feel that sense of urgency from Sanchez. For me, I feel like she's down two rounds. Certainly, the, the first round was close, but she's got to turn up here in round three. And Jenna Fabian might know that she's up two rounds, grabs these double underhooks, and walks Sanchez back against the cage, which she's had success. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Little cut over the right eye of, of uh, Sanchez. Yeah, and that's a big hematoma as well over that right eye. And that could be one of those that, that affects your eye, eyesight a little bit as well. See her blinking away some of the blood there. Jenna Fabian continues to work with these. These double underhooks and that body lock, it's just, the first work has to be done in breaking that before anything else can happen for Laura Sanchez. Absolutely, she needs to swim inside, get her own underhook, and then she can use that leverage on the inside and circle towards it to trade places or get free of Jenna Fabian. Looked like Sanchez was trying to attack the neck of Jenna Fabian, but uh, Jenna doing a good job of keeping her posture, and that might have been a headbutt, guys, in the clinch. Accidental of so, according to Gaspar Oliver. Jenna Fabian right in front of my broadcast position, pressuring Laura Sanchez. And she separates now, and a combination every single time. Now Sanchez trying to walk it down. She knows she's got to make something happen. Little exchange in big love hand from Jenna Fabian. Damage showing on the face of Laura Sanchez. Oh, again, big left hand. Wow. Sanchez is tough, and what a chin she has. 30 seconds remain here in the third and final round. Women's lightweight action in our regular season. Three points for a win, potentially an extra bonus point if we can see a last second finish here in round three. Continue to work in the clinch here. Sanchez is able to turn Fabian around. A separation at the 10 second clapper, an exchange. Once again, Fabian is able to grab hold Throws a knee, and that's the end of it. Three full rounds in women's lightweight action. Jenna Fabian thinks she's done enough. If the blood on Laura Sanchez's face is any indication, Kenny, that might be what the judges think. Take a look at our Cajunomics stats bundle presented by Geico. Nearly twice the output from Jenna Fabian. We'll see what we think next. Jenna Fabian inside the smart cage as we take a look at the rich energy replay. You see the lefty throwing that nice big high kick, hooks right up and hits her right in the neck. Nice shot, another left hand by Jenna Fabian. Here's you close the distance, Sanchez pressing the action. There's the head button that probably opened the right eye of Sanchez. Yeah, and you'll see that a lot. Anytime you get opposite stance fighters, boxing, kickboxing, MMA, you're going to see a lot of those head collisions. Nice flurry by both the ladies there at the end. What a battle. Nice left hand there by Fabian. Sanchez going to the clinch. This is a grueling fight. 
Take a look at our damage meter presented by carparts.com. This is where Laura Sanchez wore those strikes. A lot of work to the body with the knees from Jenna Fabian. And of course, the blood on at least several of those strikes landing. It might have been the headbutt that caused it, but not all that was happening with Jenna Fabian attacking Laura Sanchez's head. Fighter performance rating brought to you by Rich Energy gives all three rounds to Jenna Fabian. Lillian Garcia has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored the belt 30-27 for your winner by unanimous decision and earning three points in the women's lightweight division, Jenna Three points for Jenna Fabian with the decision victory. It came all the way from New Zealand.